What's good, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Green with Envy. Um, on this episode, you are going to hear my thoughts on the Boston Celtics losing 118 to 112 to the Golden State Warriors at home, obviously short Jalen Brown and Chris Epps Porzingis. And then on the second half of the podcast, it will be me and Will. And we're going to do something a little bit fun today. We're just going to be trying out a new um, thing that we're going to check in on every once in a while where we're doing our all NBA teams, but as a draft. Okay, so stay tuned for that. But uh, after this intro, you are going to hear my quick thoughts on the Celtics loss to the Golden State Warriors in Boston. Um, but without further ado. What's good, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Green with Envy. My man Will is flying out to Ireland to be present at uh, the wedding of our guy, Mark McDonough, who's been on the podcast before. He's got a great book about Boston, a uh, fiction book about Boston, but oh, does it feel real, uh, called I Felt a Funeral. And that sequel, I've read it. I don't know when it's going to drop, but whenever that sequel drops, it's going to be a good one. Um, today, I am just going to break down my thoughts on the Celtics loss to the Golden State Warriors. So we're going to get into that right now. Um, so obviously, the Celtics got out to a hot start with Derek White scoring 12 of the first 14 points. And it looked like the Celtics might present some problems for the Warriors. But the Warriors really put a lot of pressure on the Celtics in that first half, especially on Jason Tatum as they were doubling the ball very hard all game long and it took the Celtics a full um a full half to really catch up to the speed of the Golden State Warriors defense uh the Warriors defense has been elite i think they came into the game a top 5 defense and uh, i saw Jason Tim actually post something on Twitter saying that he was wondering how the Celtics and OKC Thunder, who the Warriors are going to play um, very soon. I don't know if it's the next game or the game after that, how their speed on defense would affect the Celtics. And, you know, it, it really took the Celtics a full half to catch up to that. Um, but once they figured it out, it looked like in the second half, they really settled into a nice rhythm. Um, they realized that because the Warriors were flying out on shooters, that there were plenty of opportunities to, cra to crash the offensive glass. Uh, the Celtics, I think, only had one offensive rebound in the first half. Let me just double check that here. Um, I'm going to pull up some numbers here, game charts. Actually, they don't have the quarter stuff on there. But the Celtics ended up with, let's see, 12 offensive rebounds in this game. And they were really uh, flying in off those corners and uh, doing a great job on the offensive glass. I got to talk about my guy, Nemius Keita. Um, last year, Keita had five offensive rebounds. That's why I'm kind of tangenting there. It's just me. Uh, bear with me. This is just full galaxy brain, instant reaction after the Celtics Warriors game. Um, so Keita, he's one of those guys that, you know, for those of you that listen to the pod, you know, I've compared him and Cornette to Tice and Rob Williams under Brad Stevens um, and Cornette being the great team defender, yada, yada, yada. And Kata being the Rob Williams, where he just has so much talent and so much raw athleticism that he needs to be on the court um, just to make those mistakes. And the Celtics did a really good job of keeping him in Maine last year, allowing him to develop, giving us fans little glimpses of hope as to what he could become. And it just so happens this year, Chris Stapps Porzingis is out. Um, Xavier Tillman has not done enough to, to earn minutes in the rotation. And Luke Cornett uh, got hurt tonight, but Kata has outplayed Cornett. Borderline has outplayed Al Horford. He's been instrumental to both ends of the court. His ability to guard on both ends, uh, to, to be impactful on both ends of the court has been amazing. Um, but he was a real problem for the Warriors and this is what game number five in a row of Kata getting real minutes. Um, he didn't close tonight's game. He wasn't in there in the last two minutes. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, Nemes Kata was a huge part of what the Celtics did in this game tonight. And I think, you know, I tweeted it out from the Green Envy Pod um, Twitter account. If he can play 
in a game with this much speed, with that many weapons on the Warriors team on both ends of the court. He deserves to be in the rotation. And from this day forward, I would expect Nemius Keita to be in that rotation, even when Chris Tapps Porzingis comes back. Uh, this is a great opportunity for the Celtics to continue to bring those Al Horford minutes down. I think Al played nearly 30 minutes tonight. Kate actually played 28 minutes. I wonder if that's a season high for him. Um, but, you know, when Porzingis comes back, you're going to have to manage his minutes. You're going to have to manage Al's minutes. And Kata deserves to be in the rotation from this day forward. He was awesome. Um, he brings so much energy. Teams don't know what to do with him on either end of the court. Uh, the, the Warriors tried to isolate him on the perimeter. Steph Curry is Steph Curry. Like nobody has a chance as a big man of guard and Steph out in the perimeter. But Kata did a good job of not allowing um, three-point shots. You know, Steph hit that one fadeaway three in his face. Uh, in the first half, but then Kata stayed on the high side and forced him to help, as you probably should do with Steph Curry. You saw Luke Cornett fall for that and then get a step back in his face in the second half there. So I was a big fan of what Kata did. I've been a big fan of Kata. I've been clamoring for him to get minutes. He's clearly developed enough where the the developmental mistakes that he makes, you have to look past them now because he deserves to be in the rotation. He's too impactful. The guys love playing with him. You saw the the cameras. If you were watching the ESPN broadcast, cut to Jalen Brown multiple times, and everybody on the bench is just so happy for Kada whenever he's doing his thing. Um, okay, let's see. Other guys to talk about. Jason Tatum. And if you're watching on YouTube, obviously, I've got the box score pulled up here. Um, so Jason Tatum played 36 minutes, um, really borderline seeing ghosts in the first half with the pressure the, the Warriors were putting on him. Wiggins really came out to play and, and put a lot of pressure on him defensively. But I thought Tatum did a great job adjusting. He let the game come to him. He had that little burst in the second quarter. And then um, in the third quarter, had 17 points and was just on fire from three. He ended up five for 10 um, from three. Missed another two free throws. He's under 80% for the year. Uh, he was seven for nine. I love that he's getting to the line eight to nine times a game, but he's he's got to be that 85 to 90% free throw shooter that he can be. He can't be high 70s. He's a better shooter than that. Um, but I thought Tatum did a good job. He only had two assists tonight, which was surprising considering how much uh, the Warriors were trying to take the ball out of his hands. You would have figured um, the Celtics would have got some easy buckets off of that. But, you know, they did a great job trapping hard, making the, the first pass to the roll man difficult. So um, in the second half, obviously, we put Tatum more in a screening position, so he didn't have quite as many opportunities to get assists. But I thought Tatum did a good job. You know, he, he, he continued that MVP campaign. He missed the three-pointer at the end, but, you know, you make some of those, you miss some of those. I thought I had no problems with the, with the way that Tatum played on offense. I thought defensively he had a couple of miscues um, on switches with Steph Curry that were really costful. One of them, I think, was more Derek White's fault than Tatum's fault, uh, the one on the wing where both of them kind of thought the other guy was going to stay with Steph. I think that was Derek White's assignment there. And then back cut, um, Tatum and Drew Holiday didn't communicate Steph back cuts for um, a wide open layup. But overall, Tatum did good. He ends up with 32 points, four rebounds, two assists, a steal and a block, four turnovers, uh, minus five on the night. But I thought Tatum was awesome. Um, Derek White, obviously I mentioned at the beginning of the game, came out on fire, had 12 of the first 14, ends up taking uh, 16 three-pointers. Seven for 16 for D white uh, from three, 44 percent. Um, he had six rebounds, three assists, two steals. I thought D white bailed the Celtics out a lot tonight. Um, both ends of the court, the hustle plays that he's making D white is a bona fide all-star at this point. The league is so deep. Who knows if he'll make it, but he's playing up to that level, all defense, all-star, um, level play out of him. Drew holiday. Um, you know, he, I, I thought Drew had a good game. Um, I thought he could have inserted himself on offense just a little bit more. He had an all around stat line, six points, nine rebounds, eight assists, um, three for 11 from the field, 0 for six from three point range. Um, I would have liked to have seen him be a little bit more aggressive on offense, especially because of the pressure that Golden State was putting on the perimeter. I thought he could have done a better job of taking advantage of that and getting in, getting to the basket. Um, but he had a couple, you know, he had those eight assists. I thought all eight assists were really high level plays and I thought Drew played well. Um, so I'm not going to knock him, but I would have liked to see him be a little bit more aggressive. Um, we needed that scoring punch out of him, but you know, we got six man of the year, Peyton Pritchard, five for 13 from the field. He was three for 11 from distance, 16 points, three rebounds, three assists, two turnovers. Um, you know, got another three pointer blocked by Gary Payton in the first half. 
back-to-back games of getting a three-pointer blocked. It seems like teams are really trying to fly out at Peyton Pritchard, but you know, he adjusted. I thought he's doing a really good job getting into the teeth of the defense. He's, as I said, playing very Jalen Brunson-esque basketball in, you know, around the nail area. Um, not as efficient as Jalen Brunson, uh, but yada, yada, yada. I don't need to compare Peyton Pritchard to Jalen Brunson again. Peyton Pritchard's playing awesome. Um, let's see. Other guys to talk about. Al Horford, you know, four for nine in 30 minutes. He had 10.7 rebounds, three assists, two steals. Um, I thought Horford was a little gun shy in the first half. He really let that thing fly in the second half, though. Um, you know, there's those, those little moments with Horford where you start to see the age, but, you know, 38 years old, you can't complain. I thought Al was awesome tonight. I It was more about the Warriors than the Celtics. You know, the first half, as I said, the Warriors defense is just this beast of a defense um, where they just fly around and they make things really difficult on you and take away, obviously, take away your best player. They took away Jason Tatum in the first half and they made the Celtics adjust. It took the Celtics an entire half to adjust. Um, but... You know, some guys I want to talk about on the Warriors here. Let's see. So they played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven guys tonight. Eleven man rotation out of them. Buddy Heald was awesome. You know, if Peyton Pritchard's not six man of the year, it's probably Buddy Heald. He was six for eleven, four for seven from three, but it felt like, you know, he hit 10 threes the way that uh, how timely those three pointers were. He ended up with 16 points. Steph Curry was awesome. Eight for 17, four for nine from three, seven for seven from the line, 27.7 rebounds, nine assists, four steals. He was amazing tonight. Oops. I'm sorry. That was, yeah, four steals. He had four steals tonight. One block. Um, Steph Curry was awesome. He plays great against the Celtics. He loves playing in TD garden. Steph Curry was amazing. Um, let's see Wiggins. Like I said, if, if the Warriors get this Wiggins, he wasn't quite, you know, NBA finals Wiggins tonight, but he was definitely better than last year. He was dealing with some, um, a lot of family issues last year, obviously lost his father seems to be a little bit more refocused this year. 16 points. Um, had that horrible smoke delay up in transition that he's getting clowned for, but I thought he played good defense on Tatum. I thought he was impactful. Um, Shout out to Wiggins for turning it around. You know, we don't get, we don't have to see the Warriors until the finals, so I'm not too worried about them. I doubt they would make it to the finals anyway, but it's fun to see Golden State still playing well. Um, I've always been a Warriors fan, even though they beat us in the finals, which sucked. Um, it's good to see them just doing their thing again. It's better it's better for the league when the Warriors are good, and the Warriors are really good right now, 7-1 and one on the year. Um, Draymond, a couple weird thing tonight where the Celtics decided to run at Draymond and run him off the three point line, um, which led to some easy buckets for the Warriors. It didn't make any sense to me as it was happening during the game. I don't know what the scouting report was, but it definitely wasn't run Draymond green off the three point line. Al Horford did it twice. Derek white did it at one point, like two of our best defenders, smartest defenders made no sense. Uh, Draymond was over four from three. Um, but you know, he was doing Draymond green shit broke up a couple of lobs at the rim seemed to be in um, everybody's head around the rim Thought he, he played well. Gary Payton was all over the place. Uh, Kevon Looney 15 minutes, but he, he had some really big offensive rebounds at the end of the game. He had six offensive rebounds, just giving me horrible flashbacks to the finals where we could not keep him off the glass. Um, Kaminga was good in his 18 minutes seems to have bought into his bench role. Uh, Moody only played 13 in the starting lineup. Trace Jackson Davis, 16 minutes, didn't really make too much of an impact. You know, it was the old heads and Buddy Heald. That's what it was for uh, for the Warriors. And then freaking Kyle Anderson hitting three, you know, three straight three pointers was silly. He was three for nine on the night in 20 minutes. He's a nice pickup for them though. Lindy Waters getting some minutes, um, but you know, it's a good test for the Celtics. I'm not sweating it. You know, we didn't have Porzingis, we didn't have Jalen Brown. If you're upset after losing that game, I mean. There's clearly a lot more things to be upset about right now in this country uh, than the Celtics lose in a game. Um, my brother was actually courtside for this game, so I'm going to check in with him. He's visiting here in Austin this weekend uh, with his his nephew, Luke, my nephew, Luke, his son, Luke. So um, I'm sure I'll get some good uh, good insight. He was sitting uh, right behind, I think, like the Wick Grossbeck seats tonight. So um, I hope it was fun for him. I'm excited to see what he thought about it. We're actually going to be going to San Antonio on Monday to check out the the um, Spurs against the Kings. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get a guest, just so you know, um, this weekend because Will won't be back for about a week. If I can't get a guest, then you'll probably just have me rambling on and on about something. 
But thank you for listening on the second half of this podcast. After the break, you are going to hear me and Will uh, drafting our all NBA teams. This, uh, for those of you that are YouTube subscribers, that video is already live on YouTube. Peace, everybody.